Few things fascinate historians, builders and survivalists more than timber that lasts centuries without modern preservatives. Walk into a 12th century church, a medieval granary or the remnants of a castle and you will often find wood still structurally sound. What's remarkable is that these builders achieved this without paint, tar or chemical sealants. No synthetic coatings, no industrial pressure treatment, and yet their structures endured wind, rain, snow and soil moisture for hundreds of years. For the first minute, consider the implications. These people had to rely solely on observation, material knowledge and patience. They developed techniques that transformed ordinary wood into a material almost immune to decay, proving that longevity doesn't always require modern chemicals, just intelligence, skill and timing. Understanding how they did this reveals practical methods that anyone working with wood today can use. So, the first principle medieval builders relied on was honestly just really careful selection and timing of the wood. Medieval carpenters knew, you see, that not all timber is equal. They avoided sap-heavy sections, favoured heartwood, and often harvested in late winter or early spring. Trees cut during dormancy contained far less sap, meaning, well, fewer sugars for fungi to feed on. Heartwood, naturally denser and richer in extractives, resisted moisture and insects more effectively than sapwood. This was uh, the first layer of rot prevention. For modern applications, this principle is, well, pretty straightforward. Choose slow-grown, dense timber for outdoor projects. If possible, harvest or source wood that has been felled in the dormant season. Even air-dried lumber benefits from selecting species and sections that naturally resist decay, reducing the need for chemical treatments. They shaped and prepared timber to minimise moisture retention. Beyond selection, medieval builders carefully prepared their timber. Beams were split along the grain rather than sawn across it, preserving the natural fibre structure. Splitting rather than sawing reduces the number of exposed capillaries that draw water into the wood. Additionally, posts and beams were sometimes tapered or given chamfered edges to allow water to run off instead of pooling. You know, anyone today building garden structures, sheds or raised beds can apply the same logic. Splitting boards or logs along the grain when possible, or at least ensuring smooth, well-draining surfaces, dramatically reduces rot risk. Simple adjustments like rounding the tops of posts or cutting slight slopes emulate these medieval practices and prevent water from settling. They dried and seasoned wood slowly to stabilise it against environmental stress. Medieval builders often stored timber for months or even years before using it. Slow air drying allowed moisture to leave the wood evenly, reducing internal stress and shrinkage that leads to cracking and decay. Unlike modern kiln drying, which can force moisture out too quickly, natural seasoning preserved structural integrity while making the wood less hospitable to fungi. For a modern builder, the takeaway is patience. 
whenever possible, air-dry timber for a few months in a well-ventilated, covered space before installation. You know, even untreated wood can last for decades if it enters service with just the right moisture content and stability. They elevated wood and, well, designed structures specifically to avoid prolonged ground contact. Medieval builders were honestly quite meticulous about how timber met the soil. Beams, posts and stilts were often set on stone footings or other raised bases just to keep them off the wet ground. Roofs were designed with extended eaves to prevent rain from hitting lower walls, and, you know, floors were sometimes raised above the earth to improve airflow. This combination of elevation and ventilation minimised prolonged moisture exposure, which, honestly, is the single greatest cause of decay. Modern homesteaders, shed builders or cabin makers can, in fact, replicate this approach. Elevating wood on stones, gravel or concrete pads and designing overhangs or ventilation channels, well, that really does replicate the medieval principles of passive water management. You know, the wood itself does not need chemicals if it is kept mostly dry. They actually relied on natural wood properties rather than coatings. In addition to careful selection, shaping and drying, medieval builders took advantage of wood species naturally rich in decay-resistant compounds. Oak, larch and chestnut were prized for outdoor construction because, well, their high tannin content repels fungi and insects. This inherent protection often eliminated the need for tar, paint or other coatings. In essence, the wood itself became the preservative. Modern builders can, you know, follow the same strategy opt for naturally durable species for outdoor projects rather than relying entirely on artificial treatments. Combined with correct handling and structural design, these woods can survive decades or even centuries. The effectiveness of these methods is proven by surviving structures. From Norwegian stave churches to English medieval barns and German timber-framed houses, wood that was harvested, prepared and installed according to these principles remains remarkably sound. Archaeologists consistently find that posts kept off the ground split rather than sawn properly dried and made from naturally durable wood resist decay far better than chemically treated wood buried in soil today. These surviving examples highlight that technique, not chemicals, was the key to longevity. Anyone can apply these medieval strategies to modern woodworking projects. The steps are simple. Select dense, slow-grown heartwood. Cut or split along the grain. Allow the timber to air dry thoroughly. Avoid prolonged ground contact. And use species with natural decay resistance. Even without chemicals, these steps drastically extend the lifespan of wood in outdoor applications. Garden beds, fences, decks or small structures benefit immensely. Well, the method works because it works with the natural properties of the wood and the environment, not against them. Medieval builders understood that longevity comes from skill, observation and proper installation, 
not magic coatings. Rediscovering their methods provides us with sustainable, practical ways to protect wood without modern chemicals. If you want more insight into lost construction techniques that still outperform modern methods, subscribe to Relic Logic and share this guide with someone who appreciates real historical craftsmanship. The knowledge of the past still has much to teach us.